Hi everybody! Welcome to this tutorial where I will show you how to make recolors for The Sims 4 assets. Whether you want to recolor clothes or furniture, here you will learn the basics to be able to do it. All you need is The Sims 4 Studio and a photo editing tool of your choice. It is important that you are familiar with the tool you choose because the steps maybe are performed differently in every tool. I will be using Photoshop as this is the tool I am working with all the time. So if you also have Photoshop, I can give you some helpful tips to make your recoloring adventure a bit easier. Don't worry though, if you use a different tool, there's always a way to get to the same result. Make sure to leave a like and sub if you want to see more tutorials for The Sims 4 and if you want to share your CC adventure with others or need help, you might want to join my Discord server. Link is in the description. Let's start in Sims 4 Studio. This is the place where you can create and manage custom content. If you're not familiar with this screen at all, I recommend to check out my big How to make CC for The Sims 4 video. The first couple of minutes are all about the main menu of Sims 4 Studio. We have the possibility to make recolors of build and buy stuff as well as create a sim asset. The procedure is basically the same with every object, so in this video I will make a recolor of some clothing to teach you the very basics of recoloring. There are four options now. Create standalone means that you can create an asset that you will find on its own in the catalog or in create a sim. But the prerequisite is that you have the mesh of it so that your recolor works. The next option, create a 3D mesh, gets around this problem, because you will create a complete full new asset with its mesh, so it's not only just a texture. If you want to publish your recolors to the public though, make sure to check if the CC creator you're recoloring stuff from is okay with that. The third option, add swatch, will, well, add swatches to an existing asset. So if you just want some more color options without having a new asset cluttering up your cast catalog, this is the go-to for you. The last option, override, will override an existing object, but I never use this, so I can't tell you more about it. We will go with the first option right now, create cast standalone. Later, I will also show what happens when you add cast part swatches. Select the option and click on cast. This will open the catalog of all the stuff you have available in your game. With shift left click, you are able to select all existing swatches of the asset you choose for recoloring. I chose this dress from laundry day stuff. Click next and save your package file into your mods folder. Now the real studio opens where you can take a look at your work. For making nice recolors, it is always the best option to have a white base so that the colors will look really great. In my example, there's already a white swatch, but some assets don't have it, so I will pick the yellow one to show you how to make your own white base texture. Export the diffuse texture and open it in your photo editing tool. Now we have one layer with our texture. If we want to make easy recolors, we have to split our texture into different layers. For example, here we have a dress and a jacket. So we have to split up the texture into these two layers. Just duplicate your base layer and remove the stuff you don't need on one layer. I have a jacket layer and a dress layer. In the jacket layer I remove the dress, in the dress layer I remove the jacket. Quick tip if you are familiar with Blender, export the mesh and open it in Blender. Select the mesh with A and export the UV layout. Now you can use the UV layout as a template that shows where the different parts are split. With this technique, your texture will not have any empty parts, because only what's part of the UV layout will be displayed on the mesh. After deleting the different parts, I have a layer with only the jacket and one layer with only the dress. The next obstacle of this texture is the cute pattern on the jacket. So in this case we have to get rid of it. You can of course leave it like that and only recolor the dress if you'd like. In Photoshop there is a nice feature where you can select an area and fill it with content. I always do this step by step to get the best result possible. Select an area, right click and choose fill with content. Click OK and see the magic. Do this until you're satisfied with the result. 
Now that the jacket is clean, we have to take out the colors of everything to make our white base texture. Every photo editing tool has the option to lower the saturation. Just look out for it and use it on every layer that you have. You also have to play with the brightness of the texture to make it white. Depending on the photo editing tool you use, you can now create a new layer on top of each main layer, change the blending mode to multiply or color, and start applying different colors. This is what I did when I started making CC, but it somehow was very tedious and sometimes the results were really pale. Then I found something that helped me a lot, the Photoshop actions by Silver Hammer Sims. I don't know what I would be without them. Link is in the description. I just select my layer that I want to use the action on, click the little play button and ta-da, it's green. Now I select the three layers and pick a color and the recolor is done. Because there are so many layers now, I group them into a folder so that I can close the folder if needed to clean up the layer window. I use the action on every layer that I need to recolor and put each group into a folder again. Don't worry about some unclean parts in your texture. If you make the UV layout visible again, you can see that this part is not seen on your asset. You can now export your texture and import it into Sims 4 Studio. By the way, you can get rid of the other swatches from the beginning. Pick the right colors that represent your swatch and continue with the next swatch. You don't have to worry about the shadow or normal map when making recolors because they are already in your file due to the fact that you copied the asset. If you want you can also add other stuff like icons from the game or other stuff you like, something you drew yourself or so on. At the end make sure to probably tag your swatches with the right color so people that look for specific colors in game will also see the right swatches. Save your project and start the game to take a look at your result. If you're not happy with the brightness of your recolor, just adjust the base texture's brightness until it fits your needs. And this is how to make a basic recolor of an in-game asset. Now we move on to recoloring custom content. To tell Sims 4 Studio that you want to recolor a specific custom content, you have to put the package file of set CC into the mods folder of Sims 4 Studio. If you haven't changed the path, it should be in your documents folder. Do not remove your package file from your Sims 4 mods folder, just put a copy into the Sims 4 Studio one. Restart Sims 4 Studio and continue like we did at the beginning with the game asset recolor. We select create cast standalone and have to pick the asset we want to recolor. In the filter option Content, choose Custom and everything you put into your Sims 4 Studio Mods folder will show up. Now select the CC you want to recolor. In my case I will recolor the swimsuit for toddlers that I made. From here it's the same as before. You have to create a white base texture and then you can design it as you wish. Sometimes CC creators will share their Photoshop files that you can also use in other tools. This is helpful for recolors as there are already is a white base texture. If you want to recolor my stuff, you can always get the Photoshop file on the Patreon post. If you open it up, you can easily change the color or patterns without struggling to separate different parts. Here you can see that the Photoshop action by Silver Hammer Sims also has the possibility to apply patterns really easy. If your pattern appears really small, just adjust the size on all three layers. Export the texture, import it into Sims 4 Studio, save and open the game. Here is the recolor we made. You see that it is right next to the original asset. This is because of the display index that was copied when you created the package file. If you also want all your recolors grouped together, I recommend to watch my tutorial called How to Group Your Cast Items in The Sims 4. 
In the last part of this tutorial, I want to show you what the difference is when you select Add Cast Part Swatch. If we select this option, we also have to choose which assets we want to recolor. I will pick the swimsuit again. Save it into your mods folder. Now I add the swatch that we already prepared before. And after saving this one and opening the game, we can see that this swatch is now part of the original asset. Really cool, right? I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. As always, practice makes perfect. So just try a bit until you find the right tools. And if you're struggling, just hit me up and I'll try my best to help you. Like and subscribe if you want to see more. Hope you're having a good day. See you next time. Bye.